Welcome to this edition of In-Depth Alaska. On Thursday, our Washington, D.C. Bureau sat down with Alaska Senator Dan Sullivan to talk about everything from hunting and fishing rights to Fat Bear Week. Here's an extended version of that conversation. Congressional Review Act, you're working on an amendment in relation to the hunting and trapping regulations. Can you explain the importance of it and why Alaskans and Americans should be concerned? Yeah, this is another uh, one of these. Uh, I've, my office has laid out, I think the number 68 executive orders and executive actions taken by the Biden-Harris administration, singularly focused on Alaska. 68. There is no state in the country that's getting that kind of abuse. And it's usually focused on shutting down our resources, shutting down our access to federal lands, or literally shutting down Alaska's right to manage its own fish and wildlife, which is exactly what this is. We clearly have the right under federal law, under our constitution, to manage fish and game uh, for Alaska. What this... Um, rule that the uh, Biden-Harris administration put out. It was similar to a 2017, uh, was, uh, sorry, 2016 rule that the Obama-Biden administration um, put out that was essentially usurping Alaska's right to manage fish and game. This is a fundamental right of any state. So you ask why that hurts Alaska. Well, we don't want the federal government telling us how to manage fish and game. We know how to do it way better than the feds including on this issue where they came up with a lot of, we think, bogus rationale like, oh, this uh, bear baiting is somehow um, unsafe for Alaskans. We don't think there's any evidence to that effect. But the question you're asking, I think, is more broadly um, relevant to other states. The reason we were able to get the CRA passed in 2017, um, when I got it passed, very similar uh, rule that we're trying to overturn, was because other states said, wait, I have the right to manage fish and game too as a state in the United States. When is the federal government going to do that to me? So even though this is Alaska specific, the last time this came up, we were able to rescind this rule with a Congressional Review Act uh, uh, resolution that I put forward. So I'm planning on doing it again. Last time we got Democrats and Republicans to support the rule. And this is just defending the state of Alaska's right to manage fish and game. The Biden-Harris administration does not have the legal authority to do this. I think they actually know that because I've asked them, show me the legal authority you have to do this. They've never been able to do that. So this is analogous to my successful effort in 2017 when Obama did it to us. And we're going to push it hard. Uh, I'm glad you brought up bears I mean, your answer at one yeah. point because Fat Bear Week is coming up. So I'm wondering <laughs> if you have any thoughts on that. Well, you know, um, we have amazing bears. I love to view them. Occasionally I like to hunt them. But um, it's one thing that makes our state so great. I'm glad this Fat Bear Week has kind of, um, it's kind of gone national. And I will tell you this, every year um, I host a lunch for my Senate colleagues. And I will say, well, every senator on the Republican side, we always host a lunch on Thursday. I will say that most senators mark their calendar when I host or when Senator Murkowski hosts because we always bring great Alaska seafood, salmon, uh, halibut. And when I host, I also put up the live bear cam uh, from uh, Brooks Falls, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. I have TV cameras up and most senators really enjoy the lunch for its food, but they really, really enjoy the lunch I put on because they get to watch these big, beautiful bears that are trying to catch salmon, and uh, it's, it's pretty fun. Amazing. Turning now to- Which is why you guys gotta get to Alaska and see all this. Uh, absolutely. Uh, turning to some recent concerns off the coast of Alaska over yeah. activities from Russian and uh, Chinese military units. Yeah. What should, you've expressed concern over this, what oh, yeah. should Alaskans know about your concerns? What should Americans know about your concerns? Well, look, Alaska's on the front lines of what I refer to as the new era, the new era of authoritarian aggression. And that's led by the dictators in uh, China, Xi Jinping, and uh, Russia, that's Putin. They are uh, increasingly working together and they're taking aggressive actions, particularly in the airspace and in the oceans off the coast of Alaska. 
uh, very um, uh, escalatory, very provocative. Uh, we had just in the last two weeks, five Russian incursions into our airspace. That is unprecedented. The other thing that's unprecedented, about a month and a half ago, we had a uh, Russian-Chinese Joint Strategic Bomber Task Force. They've never done that collectively against the United States anywhere in our airspace. They're doing it in Alaska now. We've had Russian and Chinese naval vessels off the coast of Alaska. So this summer, building on last summer, building on the summer before, uh, has seen very aggressive action. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure we have we meet force with force. The only thing these dictators, Xi Jinping, Putin, understand is force. They don't understand pretty language and nice diplomatic speak. They understand force. So we need military assets that can intercept these um, Russian and Chinese military aircraft and Navy vessels at our will. And we have great men and women who are doing that. And importantly, Leah, we need uh, infrastructure. Now, the good news is we are building up our military uh, in Alaska, and we are finally starting to build up our infrastructure. I've been working on getting a strategic Arctic port in the Port of Nome. We're not talking about that anymore. We are starting to build that. That is a really important element of American and Alaskan infrastructure where we could put Navy vessels there, we could put icebreakers there, and then, so that's a little bit, um, you know, uh, up in the northern, western and northern part of our state. But out on the Aleutian Island chain, um, I have been a strong advocate for reopening the naval base on ADAC out in the Aleutian Island chain. This year's National Defense Authorization Act, I have a provision that tells the Navy, come up with a plan to reopen ADAC. ADAC could be an air station, a submarine base, a base for Navy um, surface vessels to uh, port in. So this is a really strategic base. If you look at a map, it's the gateway to the Arctic. It's a flank on the Chinese. So assets, infrastructure, two concerns of mine. Uh, we passed the National Defense Authorization Act. I was in the Senate Armed Services Committee. I was able to get almost $800 million in military construction for Alaska in that bill. That's gonna be great for our economy, great for our workers, but really important for national security, the kind of infrastructure we need. Senator Schumer, the majority leader, just won't bring this up. We have all kinds of national security challenges. The National Defense Authorization Act is a bipartisan bill, one of the most important bills we have in the Senate. He won't bring it up. And, you know, more broadly, uh, the Biden-Harris administration every year cuts defense spending. And this year's budget from the Biden-Harris administration shrinks the Army, shrinks the Navy, shrinks the Marine Corps. That is exactly the wrong message we need to be sending to the dictator Xi Jinping, Putin, the Ayatollahs in Iran, the dictator in North Korea. So we have some important things happening, but I do have concerns. Yeah, and... Uh when we're talking about these tensions, obviously there's a lot of sort of a global web, a lot of it's interconnected. Yeah. Uh, we've heard from experts who say they believe that the increased activity off the coast of Alaska could be related to the U.S. support for Ukraine and the possibility of Ukraine using long-range missiles in Russia. Do you believe these are connected and do you believe those long-range missiles would increase the conflict, decrease the conflict? Yeah, I don't know if they're directly connected. They might be. I have not seen intelligence on that. But it is part of the trend for China, Russia, the other authoritarians, the uh, dictator, ayatollahs, terrorists in Iran. Um, what's happening is they're working together, they're building up their military, and they're being very aggressive from a military perspective towards their neighbors. Obviously look at Iran and its proxies uh, invaded Israel on October 6. Uh, Putin and Russia invaded Ukraine. Xi Jinping is very aggressive in the South China Sea. Uh, I just met with the Philippine foreign minister. Very aggressive actions against the Philippines and Taiwan from the uh, Communist Party in China. 
So it's all part of a pattern of these dictators on the march, building their military, working together, and taking aggressive actions towards their neighbors. Usually they're democratic neighbors, by the way, who they, uh, who they fear. So they're doing it to us in the Arctic, in the North Pacific. They're doing it to Alaska. So look, our, our fellow Alaskans, my fellow Alaskans, we've, we have more veterans per capita in the state in the country. We understand the important role our state plays in terms of uh, its strategic location, its military. Um, so I, I say to Alaskans, look, we don't need to be afraid of this. We should expect more of this. I've been predicting this increased activity for some time. What we need to do is just recognize we need to be forceful back. That's what dictators understand. If they see, we if they see weakness, they'll exploit it. Weakness is provocative. We cannot be weak up in the great state of Alaska. And uh, moving towards the actions from last night in the Senate, the yeah. uh, CR, yeah. Push it the deadline to December 20th for, for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the Hill comes back November 12th. Do you think that's a realistic timeline to get the rest of the appropriations processed through? Well, look, generally I don't like CRs, right? They don't, they, they really hurt the military. They show the dysfunction of the Congress in terms of budgets. Um, but I also really don't think government shutdowns are helpful. Uh, I would have preferred this CR have the what was called the SAVE Act that was initially in the House. That's the bill. Very common sense. I bet you 90% of Americans would agree with it. You got to be an American citizen to vote in our elections. By the way, I think that's in the Constitution. That should be a no-brainer. Why the Democrats oppose that is beyond me. But we we're also able to get in the CR. Um, my office got a, a fix. There was a little bit of a legislative hiccup on this issue of um, the Coast Guard purchasing an icebreaker to be home ported in Juneau. Uh, we fixed that in last night's CR. So, um, so I ended up supporting the CR. Again, I wish it would have had the SAVE Act in it, common sense. Um, will we be, be able to get um, an, uh, the work done between the, uh, mid-November and you know, Christmas Eve? Uh, I hope so, and I hope that um, we'll have a productive uh, six or seven weeks during that time. And uh, moving on to another topic, Elections coming up, very tight election. A lot of eyes will be on Washington on January 6th when it comes time to certify. We've heard from former President Trump and Speaker Johnson saying they would accept the results if it's free and fair. Yeah. What do you make of those comments? Well, I, I mean, I think those are rational comments. Um, I think that, you know, I, after looking at the evidence, looking at the court cases, looking at all the facts, I certified the last election. I think that's kind of what they're getting at. And I think that's what, you know, responsible members of Congress do. That's what I did in the last case. And I think, of course, we all want free and fair elections. By the way, the SAVE Act would have made them, the, given the American people a little bit more assurance that they would be free and fair. You do not want illegal immigrants or non-Americans voting in our elections. You do have some Democrats who push for that idea, which in my view is nuts. So, um, that's what we want, free and fair elections. And one final question, sure. the, uh, those qualifiers of, you know, if it's free and fair, do you think it leaves room for doubt about the election? Do you think it can sort of preemptively sow doubts? No, again, I think if you ask uh, every, most Americans, I think people would say exactly that. They want free and fair elections with American citizens being the one who choose our next president. And I think that makes sense. It's certainly what I agree with. Thank you to Senator Dan Sullivan for sitting down with our Washington, D.C. Bureau. And thank you for listening to In-Depth Alaska. Please like and subscribe to this podcast.